The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Brittany Warner here with realagriculture.com. Thanks for joining us for another episode of our Canola School. Today we have agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada. It is Warren Ward. How are you today, Warren? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, thanks. Thanks for joining us. And today we're talking about nitrogen management in canola. Now, of course, uh, we're out here in Scott, Saskatchewan right now. And Saskatchewan in general, Southwest Saskatchewan, Southeast Alberta, uh, not immune to drought conditions, are we seeing um, some nitrogen hangover or bonuses from the 2021 drought? Yeah, so maybe if there's one silver lining from those challenging uh, conditions we had last year with with uh, oh, lack of moisture, is that there was a, a seemed to be a fairly large or, or consistent carryover of nitrogen in, in those drought stricken fields. So uh, one of the ways of knowing that though, or, or, or verifying that I guess would be using soil tests. And, and there was a bit of an uptake last year in terms of soil testing in the fall to see because I think a lot of people realized I applied I applied this much nitrogen but I only removed that much in terms of a crop so there must you know where where is the rest of it in a lot of cases it was still sitting right there in the field uh, you know at, looking at the the site we're at today they did have I think about a 45 pound nitrogen uh, nitrate nitrogen carryover in this soil from last year so so that's higher than than they would normally expect to see so that combined with the, the really dry conditions we had last year now we've got some moisture happening this year so we've got access to that nitrogen that was was left there hopefully we've accounted for it by doing a soil test so we can you know adjust our fertilizer rates this year and and then uh, also account for that mineralization that's going to happen in the soil now that we have some moisture there to to drive that process as well now how late in the season can we apply nitrogen to canola and still have it be beneficial yeah, so if we look at these yellow flowers behind me, this is too late. <laughs> really, what you want to look at is kind of up to that six leaf stage is, is kind of the, the deadline to get your nitrogen on for canola. Um, you know, there's there's many different ways of getting there. You can put it, to, some people might start in the fall with banding uh, or banding in the spring or all one pass at seeding uh, and then into some top dressing in season. So that's kind of the, those are the, the list to choose from. Um, but if you are doing that top dressing application, and you do want to make sure it happens prior to that six leaf stage because really what when you think about it what has to happen is that nitrogen you apply has to move into the soil where the roots can then take it up by the time that the plant needs needs to do so and when the plant really needs to do so is after that six leaf stage when it starts bolting into flowering and that's the, the peak nitrogen uptake time frame for that plant so we want to make sure it's there ahead of time uh, and and available when the plant needs it for sure and and so if we are kind of getting to that six leaf stage, the plant's a little bit bigger, how much do we have to worry about trampling if guys are going out into the field to apply nitrogen and are there ways around it with applications and different methods? Yeah, there's there's not a lot of ways around that. Anytime you're you're through the field, you're gonna you're gonna be making some tracks. Um, depending on the product you're using though, so you could uh, look at, at top dressing uh, a granular product, you could look at top dressing uh, like a liquid UAN product. Um, it, with the UAN, uh, with the streamer nozzle, sometimes what what people will observe is is some leaf burning happening, and that's that's a standard thing. And the way I like to look at it is that leaf burning is uh, is is really not a, an issue, and it's doing a lot less damage than not having enough nitrogen would do, right? So you, you, the benefit far outweighs the 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 pain, I guess, in terms of getting that nitrogen on. The other thing to keep in mind as we are looking at top dress situations or anytime we're we're a Applying nitrogen not in a band and sometimes even in a band but what are what are some of the sources of nitrogen that we can use that's going to be most efficient and 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 give us the the best benefit um, anytime it's a, a broadcast application say of, of urea uh, I do like to see an enhanced efficiency product going on with that so something with that um, 
a urease inhibitor that's going to keep that nitrogen from, from volatilizing and gassing off. If we're applying it, we want it to stay on the field. We don't want to lose it to the air. So, so uh, using a product uh, like an Agritain or another urease product, you know, for those broadcast applications can really limit those losses and, and benefit you at the end of the day. Great, great points. Thanks so much for joining us today, Warren. It's my pleasure.